Hi, my name is Joe, and welcome to a very short edition of Joe's Technology. I have quite a few friends that, for whatever reason, have had problems with Windows. Usually it's a family member has gone to a bad website, now the machine is infected, now it's time to spend hours reinstalling things, and after a while it really gets old. Now that's provided you're lucky enough to even have the install disk. I have some friends that have computers that are basically sitting around doing an imitation of a paperweight because they did not come with install CDs and you know, all the tech support people want to charge outrageous amounts of money and so the machine just sits there and collects dust. You know, there's nothing wrong with it, they don't want to throw it away, they, they put their hard-earned money into this computer but it came with this terrible Windows operating system which typically will suffer bit rot after a year or two and just die or you know you go to the wrong website and something leaps out and takes it over so for those friends who just would like to get a computer up and running again and their primary goal is look I want to be able to go on the web uh, a friend of mine approached me recently she had this exact same problem her daughter had gone to a bad website now the machine was corrupt you know it had been infected with something and it wouldn't boot anymore and it was you know she needed to be able to find a job She's between jobs, and she just needed a reliable web browser. And, you know, here, here she had these computers laying around that were doing nothing. And she couldn't afford any tech support. She couldn't afford to buy a Chromebook. Chromebooks are very nice, by the way, if you, you just need a simple computer to browse the web. And so I introduced her to Linux Mint. And now we're going to be wiping all those machines out and putting Linux Mint on them instead. And here, let's take a look at why. If you're a longtime Windows user, you may be familiar with the Start menu and all that other stuff. Well, instead of Start menu, we have the LM menu. And, oh, look, it's right where we had expected. Hey, Firefox looks nice and familiar. I mean, applications that we're used to using are here. And uh, as a matter of fact, here, let me go ahead and click on Images. Uh, I'm going to search for a picture here. If you've uh, never seen Tux the Penguin, he's basically our mascot for Linux. Here, I'll go ahead and pick this one, save view image, and here I'll save. Uh, you'll see why here in just a second. Uh, let's see, instead of downloads, I'll go ahead and put this in my pictures folder. As you can see, not too complicated. Anybody should be able to do this. All right, so I've gone onto the web. You know, I've got a web browser that everybody's familiar with. I've downloaded a picture. Uh, why did I do that? Well, in addition to coming with a web browser, the Linux Mint uh, environment also comes with Office packages, in particular LibreOffice. So, you know, most people that I know of, uh, well, typically they're like, they need to be able to have an Office suite of some kind and have a web browser, and that's 95% of what they use their computers for. So, you know, here, here I want to have a nice. Uh, uh, let's say, hmm, you know what, I will insert a picture, in fact, the one that I just downloaded. There we go, there's the picture directory, there's the tux folder. So just like I would be able to do in, say, Microsoft Word, you know, Tux the Penguin! Oh, and if I didn't know how to spell penguin, you know, I get the same kind of hints. Computer's like, oh, did you mean penguin? So, if you're looking for, you know, most people that I know of, they're looking for the feature, look, I need to be able to write documents, I need to be able to spell check them, um, I, I need to be able to use different fonts, uh, make them different sizes, uh, bold them, you know, take my paragraphs back and forth, you know, <laughs> maybe underline stuff. Whoops, oh, I have to highlight it. Okay, now underline it. And, uh, you know, that's that's what they're looking for. They're looking for a simple office suite to get the job done. By the way, LibreOffice, Libre is French for free. This doesn't cost anything, and it comes with every version of Linux Mint. There are various different editions. We're looking at the KDE one, which is the K desktop environment. So these little gears is the uh, logo for KDE, and then people just modify this part of the logo. So 
whenever you see these little gears, we're usually referring to the, the K desktop environment. This is a new concept for a lot of Windows users who are used to only one desktop and it's the desktop that Microsoft picks for you. You don't get a choice about that. We saw that highlighted with Windows 8, where Microsoft said, all right, we've gone crazy. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because, I'm not gonna speculate. Um, <laughs> I was gonna make a bad joke, but um, for some reason they went off the deep end and thought that the world was just going to accept that they would radically change the interface that controlled basically how you interact with a Windows computer. Well, you know, there are businesses all around the world with huge workforces of people that have more than a decade of experience with Windows computers. And the prospect of having to retrain all those workers on a whim, you know, it's not like the new environment added something. Uh, Microsoft did, just did it. So if you prefer the old Windows 7, and below look, as you can see, those looks pretty familiar. I've got a desktop, um, you know, here's my file manager. If I wanted to, I can put things on my desktop. So this is basically exactly, uh, here I'll just say copy. So now I actually have two copies of this image. See, I can, I can bring it up. If I wanted to, I could even edit it. Uh, oh, let's see, open with the, GIMP is a graphic image manipulation program. So GIMP is a very famous uh, free uh, graphic editor. So if I wanted to, I could make changes to my images. Uh, again, all these uh, programs are free. Now, if you've ever used Windows Paint, you may notice that there's a few more <laughs> tools <laughs> available with the GIMP than there ever was with Windows Paint. It takes a little while to get used to the GIMP. At first, I'll admit, I didn't like it. But now that I understand how all the tools work, this is my go-to editor of choice. Oh, and speaking of um, office environments, in addition, it also comes with, uh, if you're familiar with spreadsheets, my life seems to be spreadsheets. So, eh, here, let's just throw in a few random numbers here. If you spent years learning the Microsoft way of doing things, you probably are familiar with formulas like sum and uh, here. So you can apply all the same thing that you already know that you're already familiar with, and you can do it for free. Now, if you've seen the news recently, Microsoft now has what's called Office 365, which means, you know, get ready, you get to pay 365 days a year for your Office suite, instead of just paying for it once and using it. And, uh, well, LibreOffice is free. Oh, notice that there's not like a version number. <laughs> I mean, there is a version number, but, you know, yeah, it's 4.2.6.3, who cares? Um, it, as long as the spell checker is still correct, as long as I can still format paragraphs, as long as I can add up my columns, I don't care. Um, so none of this LibreOffice 97, LibreOffice 2000, LibreOffice 2015. It's just a racket, you know, with Microsoft to get you to pay and pay and pay and pay. And in Linux, you're not going to deal with that. You'll be able to do all of this that you're seeing me do for free. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Um, oh, and, and if you're big into presentations, we have a presentation program also. If you've used Microsoft PowerPoint, this will look familiar. You know, add title, add text. You can still have transitions. You can still have special effects, backgrounds, graphics, everything that you can uh, think of. In fact, you can even bring PowerPoint presentations into LibreOffice and it'll read them without even converting them. Oh, by the way, if you're starting to think to yourself, wow, maybe I should give Linux a try. I wonder how hard it is to find software for it. It is true that Linux has its, you know, just as Macintosh's uh, computers, they want their specific Mac software um, and Windows machines want Windows programs. Linux machines prefer Linux stuff. It is possible using something similar to an emulator to run Windows programs, but it's generally a bit of a pain. Uh, it's much easier to just actually use software that's made for Linux. How hard is it to find? You may be thinking to yourself, I go to the store and I only see Windows programs on the shelves. Well, good for Windows. Um, nothing on those shelves is free. <laughs>
Oh, by the way, as you can see, Linux is very security conscious, so anytime I perform uh, something that changes the configuration of the computer, such as in this case I'm going to install software, I'm prompted for my administrative password, so this way people can't make unauthorized changes to my computer without knowing that password. There. So kids can use this computer, and they can't install things without my knowing about it, for example. This is very handy. Or if you have relatives that come over and they say, hey, I want to check Facebook. And I'm like, all right, sure, go ahead. You know, you can use, you know, I've got a nice, you know, plain vanilla web browser here. You can go to all kinds of sites. You can go to questionable sites. And I don't have to worry about this machine getting infected. Um, uh, viruses don't work on Linux the way they do on Windows. It would take a little while to explain. I'll probably do it in another video. But just trust me, uh, it, it just doesn't happen. And the same is true with uh, Macintosh uh, machines, because they're using a variant of Unix, although Unix should be free, because they base their thing off FreeBSD, but Apple definitely doesn't sell things for free. Um, okay, rant over. Um, <laughs> if you have kids at home, and uh, you know we've got science and education programs, although you know what kids are going to love most is if you install game packages. Oh, we got games. Um, some of them are, are pretty silly little games. You're probably wondering, well, what kind of quality? Well, it's, you know, typical. Um, in many cases, they're clones. In fact, I downloaded one earlier just to save some time. So here, I downloaded a little arcade game called Super Tux 2. Ta-da! Oh, you know what? Here, let's move this over a little bit. Let's see if I remember how this plays. <laughs> let's see. Let me try and turn down the volume here. Uh, let's see. There's got to be a an audio level here. Uh, you would think. <coughs> oh, wait a minute. You know what? What am I thinking? There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <coughs> I was trying to remember... Uh, oh. it, with each program, they will change things, and so sometimes you'll have to do a bit of hunting, but you probably have to do that anyways with Windows machines. So this is not any real different... Um, this is probably a clone of, I would say, mm, Super Mario Brothers, if you ever enjoyed that, except it's done here with penguins, and somebody made their own levels. Okay, so first up. Now imagine kids having fun with this. And best of all, they're having fun with it for free! It's not costing you any money, so you take that old computer that's sitting in the closet that is not doing anything, whoops, and set it up with a game or two. I mean, if you saw, there was, what, 1,900 games in the, uh, the free thing there? Whoops. Oh, I gotta get that. There we go. Now I'm a big penguin. <laughs> you get the idea. So the quality is actually not bad, considering these are, are completely free programs. So that didn't cost anything, and that's available here from the store. Uh, well, it's not really a store because they're not actually selling it to me. Oh, women will like this here. Uh, to give you an example of how easy it is to install a program, see here, I'm, I'm clicking on G-Jeweled here, and it shows me, you know, what I'm going to see on the screen. So that should look familiar, and I can just click Install. It tells me how big it is, and look at that. It's not a very big uh, one megabyte of space required, and it's already here. And if I change my mind, I can just click Remove, and it goes away. So, but here, let's see, just for fun. Applications, uh, Logic Game. Oh, it categorized it, how nice. Uh, we'll say Normal. All right, ladies, don't laugh at me. I'm, I'm not uh, an expert on these little games uh, like you are. Uh, I know, you're probably going to see it, and they're like, ah, oh, how could he be so dumb? You get the idea. 
this this is free this costs nothing I was able to pick it and download it in just a moment so if you've got a computer where you're thinking to yourself man this thing is a paperweight it sure would be nice if I could put it back to work and let my family use it and not have to worry about it getting viruses think about Linux um, you know uh, that office package I was I was demonstrating when kids take their work and hand in their completed printed documents nobody cares whether it was typed up on Microsoft Office or on LibreOffice you can save a ton of money instead of spending annual fees and having all kinds of tech support problems um, speaking of tech support if there are things that you're interested in there's lots and lots and lots of support available for free online for Linux uh, lots of great forums on Facebook and uh, throughout the, the web in general. So this has just been like a quick, you know, overview of uh, Linux, you know, just to get you uh, maybe looking at it just for Linux Mint. There are many other Linux distributions that have different focuses. Like I said, this one is geared towards the desktop user. And I'm going to be putting together a video demonstrating how you get this software and install it uh, very soon. So look for it here on this channel. Enjoy and see you next time on Joe's Technology.